In this video, I will be comparing the theme of censorship in the Fahrenheit 451 novel by Ray Bradbury to the censorship that goes on in Eritrea, a country in West Africa. Fahrenheit 451 is set in a futuristic dystopian society where knowledge is restricted and everything is completely controlled by the government. Knowledge and books are so prohibited and frowned upon that the government has firemen whose jobs are specifically to burn books and the houses of those who are in possession of the books. We meet one of those firemen who is named Montag and is basically blinded by the government. The reason I say that he is blinded is because he does not show any interest or question anything about burning books and works as a puppet for the government at the start. However, this all changes when he meets Clarice, who is enthusiastic and curious about everything and ignites Montag's curiosity, which transforms him and his character as he begins to become more self-aware as he starts becoming interested in what was always right in front of him. To speed things up, Montag goes on a quest to find freedom from being a puppet and starts secretly acquiring books from the houses he burns and gets caught then runs away to a rebel camp outside the city who are also interested in books and knowledge. Now the theme I want you to focus on here is the censorship part where I mentioned how everything is controlled by the government. Now let's get into the documentary. Eritrea is a country bordering Sudan, Ethiopia and the Red Sea with a population of 3,546,421 in 2020, according to worldometer.com. In May 24, 1991, Eritrea gained independence from Ethiopia. Italy actually conquered Eritrea in 1882, which is why a lot of the older citizens speak Italian fluently, and you can see how most of the infrastructure looks like it's from Europe or Italy. The president of Eritrea is Isaias Afwerki, who has been president since Eritrea's independence from Ethiopia in 1991. Now if we search up censorship in Eritrea and look at the short films and documentaries about this topic, we get a bad first impression. Eritrea has another name called Africa's North Korea. So this is because of its censorship on all media and press. There is only one news channel on TV in Eritrea, and that is a government news channel where every word is fabricated to the president and government's desire. There are no journalists permitted and any that are caught in Eritrea sending information outside to other countries are killed. The newspapers are also all controlled by the government where they are told exactly how to portray stories and make the country seem as perfect as possible despite its actual gradual collapse. Every man that is healthy is enslaved into the army for an unknown number of years and for those that are not healthy enough to be put in the army are put into construction and building for the government. Here is a clip of a documentary on YouTube by a channel called Vice with 5.72 million subscribers which I believe makes its information trusted. In 2017, interviewing Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad, who is the lieutenant of a rebelling army against Eritrea. Now here is another clip of the same short documentary, but I'd like you to listen carefully to the statistics said by Matthew Pennycook. An estimated 5,000 people leave Eritrea every month, and almost as many men, women, and children left that country last year as fled Syria. It is a human exodus that is all the more staggering when you consider that this is a country of just 6 million people and one that is not presently at war. You can hear that he has said that Eritrea's population is 6 million, 
while I said that there are currently 3,546,421. However, do not confuse yourself with why the numbers are 2,453,579 less than what Matthew Cook has said, because that was in 2015, while I am talking about the current population now in 2020. All these factors clearly resemble a dictatorship and rather a very harsh one too. Going back to Fahrenheit 451, the same dictatorship, dystopian, futuristic government that was portrayed in Fahrenheit 451 in October 19, 1953 when it was published, is happening now and has been happening since 1991. It is quite fascinating to see how Ray Bradbury saw 38 years into the future, which could be because he was seeing some sort of propaganda while he knew there were lies which made him think about the future. Either way, the only difference between the dystopian government in Fahrenheit 451 and the Eritrean government is that the Eritrean government is not futuristic at all and only has very low levels of technology that are of the government and only 6% of the population have phones and televisions. Similarities between Eritrean government and that of the one in Fahrenheit 451 are the very high levels of censorship, complete control over the country giving the citizens no voice or choice and that the societies are both dictatorships. The only difference I would say in Eritrea is that as I said it's not futuristic and barely has any technology. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was very informative of the Eritrean uh, censorship situation. Uh, I will be leaving uh, some documentary links if you would like to watch some more videos to dive even deeper about the topic in er uh, of censorship in Eritrea. And all the sources I have used to produce this documentary will also be provided down below. Thank you.